Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Sioka Nissan in Quakertown, Pennsylvania to check out this 2023 Nissan Versa S in super black. We're going to check this out, see what it brings to the table in this highly competitive sub subcompact sedan segment. Let's see if this is the one to buy over that Kia Rio we just reviewed a little while ago. So let's dig in. All right, the front end of this Versa S in super black. The new Nissan badge in the center, all black on the grill up front. We do have standard lighting for headlights and turn signals. We do have some LED lighting for the daytime running lamps. But for a base vehicle, and this is the base vehicle with just one option package, it doesn't look half bad, but we do have some, what could be considered a fake vent here, but since this is smoothed out, I'm not gonna, not gonna harp on that too much. But overall, for a very small, inexpensive vehicle, it's got a pretty good looking front end. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. All right, wheel and tire setup on this Versa S. We have a 16 inch wheel, gunmetal gray with silver, good looking wheel. Standard brake and rotor package, the new Nissan badge on the center cap. These wheels are wrapped in Continental Pro Contact all season tires. 205 on the width, a 55 series side wall, 16s, all four corners, front wheel drive. All right, here's the full side profile on this Versa. Super black is the color, and it, it's all black, and it's a very conservative design here on this subcompact sedan. However, the body line that comes up through the front fender, through the door uh, handles, and then out into the tail light, at least gives it some sense of motion, a little sense of style. But this car has sold in great numbers for fleet sales, and it's really hot with the young folks. So I'd like to hear from the young folks buying their first car, if this is something that you'd be looking at here in this Nissan Versa S for 2023. Let me know what you think in the comments. Moving in closer, we are flat black on the side view mirror, flat black on the front and the rear door handle, no color match. Now we have a left side fuel filler cap up top. We are color matched roof with the old fashioned antenna rather than the shark fin and no sunroof. The rear end of this Versa, the new Nissan badge in the center, Versa on the left side of the trunk, standard lighting in the back, just like the front, all black. We do have some a faux carbon fiber design on the rear bumper down below in between the uh, light reflectors. And we have some gloss black looking as a rear diffuser, which is interesting. And then we have our exhaust tailpipe tucked up underneath the right side of the vehicle. All right, we're under the hood of this 2023 Versa S. And what are we looking at for a power plant? Well, we have a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder engine made it to a CVT transmission. 122 horsepower, 114 pound feet of torque, MPGs, 32 in the city, 40 on the highway, 35 combined, the engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. All right, before we get into the interior of this super black 2023 Nissan Versa S with the CVT, you're going to want to know, Mike, how much does this cost? Well, a rundown of the trims for the Versa, there are four. This is the second one up from the bottom. The base trim is the 1.6 liter S with a manual transmission. This one is the one up from that with the CVT. Then you can go SV or SR, all with the 1.6 liter engine. So that does not change. But for this one, the MSRP for the Versa S with the CVT is 17,400 before options. This one's got a few options. It's got the splash guards for an additional 245. It has the S plus package for 1,190. That's gonna get you 
Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity wired in the infotainment system. This is how basic this car is. An option includes wired Apple CarPlay Android Auto, a 60-40 split rear seat, and 16-inch alloy wheels. You also have to add in 170 for the carpeted floor mat and 135 for the trunk package, which gets you a trunk net and shopping bag hooks. Destination and delivery charges of 1095 from Nissan's Mexico assembly plant. We have a total MSRP for this car of $20,235 from the factory. Then we have to add in dealer added accessories of wheel locks and all weather mats. So, you'll t so your total asking price for this vehicle on the road today on the lot today, excuse me, is $20,530. Let's check out the interior. Starting with the foot box, we have a dead pedal brake and accelerator. There's carpeting on the dead pedal. Not a big fan of that, even in a base vehicle like this for the entry level car buyer. Would like to see some rubber finish on there. Protect that carpet. Floor mats are in the trunk. As you can see down below here while I'm here, your, your fuel filler releases down here, as well as the release for the hood. Now, the seats are all manual. Not surprising, we are in an entry-level vehicle for Nissan. So manual seats, driver and front passenger. Then we have cloth material on the seats, black with now this black and gray design on the insert to give it a little bit of style. But for a base, it's not too bad. Door panel action on this Versa. It's all black. We have hard black plastic up top, a black door handle, and then we have flat black along the switch gear. However, around that switch gear, as you can see, you have that faux carbon fiber look, which at least lifts it up a little bit, makes it look a little bit nicer. And then a large, nice large door, uh, door pocket down there. But overall, a pretty plain Jane door panel. Not surprising since we are in that entry level model that gets you into the Nissan brand. Now, up top here, we have soft touch, soft touch with a little stitching, and then we have a nice large glove box. All right, up top on the dash, we have two heat and air vents and our four-way hazards, and then we have Nissan's base 7-inch infotainment screen. Again, wired Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is an option in this S Plus package on this base system, uh, and that is wired in, as I said, but you also can Bluetooth your phone, get to your music. This is the home menu, and you can hit your little buttons here. So it is a touch screen, so that's nice. You can go AM, FM. You got your Bluetooth audio. You can go to your system settings, and you can go to your connections. This will connect up to five different devices, so that's not bad overall. Uh, and then if you want to go into reverse... We have a backup camera, no trajectory, and it's not as clear as it could be, but this is Nissan's older base system overall. But the plus here for this one is you can connect your phone via Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, even though it's wired. As we come down, we have AC controls, no climate control, not surprising at, the, at this price. Down below that, you have an aux jack, you have a USB A and you have a 12 volt storage area down there with the gear shift to go through the simulated gears of the CVT transmission. Manual emergency brake, two cup holders. The key, well, we don't have push button start, we have this key. That's it. Nothing going on on, there's no key fob, it's just a plain key. You stick in the ignition barrel right over here, step on the brake, and turn on the car. There's no other action other than that. It is old school, baby. And then down here, an area for storage. Back here on the back end here, you got two more USB-As for your rear seat passengers and a cup holder. So they got you covered for the back. I figured I'd show you that now. All right, Nissan steering wheel, soft touch material, nice 10 and 2 notches, Nissan badge in the center. We do have a flat bottom wheel, and that is not because it's a sports car. It's because it's helping you get in and out of the vehicle. This is a small car with a small driver's cockpit, and 
Now with the seat set for my driving position and this flat bottom, I can get out without my legs hitting the bottom of the steering wheel. So that's a nice thought there by Nissan to include that in this small car. On the left side of the wheel, you have flat black telephone voice commands over here. And then you have your cruise control on the right side. Your headlights are right here on the left and your windshield wipers are on the right. Down on the left here, this is the button to go through the digital portion of your dash. They put it over here instead of on the wheel. Interesting choice. Parking sensors, lane keep assist on off, traction control off. And this right here is your parking sensors. So how close do you want to be to the other car before your sensors go off? And it'll let you adjust that. We have a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. Here is the dash for that analog digital combo, analog gauges for your speedometer and tachometer and then a little digital display in the center. And that'll let you go through some other basic information that you may want to see on this screen. And that's about it. But at this price for an entry level car, can't complain too much. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. All right, your overhead console, not much to it since we don't have a sunroof. You want your dome lighting to come on and off when you open and close the door. This button must remain in the off position. And when that happens, the lighting comes on, close the door, the lighting will dim out. As we come on over to our sun visor with vanity, no lighting though. And does it slide? No, but you do have an extension to block out the side sun. So I'll take it. Getting in the back seat of this Versa, I have the seat set for my driving position. So let's hop on in. Low bridge on the head getting in. I'm five foot 11. I have enough room for my knees, enough room for my head once I get in, but this is a low bridge and plenty of shoulder width room. We have the cloth material all the way down. No seat pocket behind the driver, but we do have a seat pocket behind the front passenger. In the back, like I mentioned earlier, you've got your cup holder and your two USB-A's right here. So they got you covered there. Back door panel, same exact action as the front, even with the faux carbon fiber around the uh, switch gear. So overall, again, it's a very plain design. Materials are very inexpensive being used, but this is one of the base entry level versus you can get. And then we get to the back seats, same action, same cloth with the design. So I like that. But what I don't like is there's no armrest here at all. And this is something that a lot of car makers do on their entry level cars. They have no armrest. And frankly, you should have an armrest on every car for crying out loud, in my view. It doesn't cost you very much to put in a simple armrest with a couple of cup holders. So basically, you're going to use this cup holder here. You're going to use this cup holder in the one door. And then you're going to use the cup holder over there if you're sitting in the back. But I do have plenty of room in the back of this vehicle. But I'm going to need some air or heat back here because it is stuffy here in the back. And I have this air conditioning blasting away up front. All right, open in the trunk in the Versa. You're down here, right here by the driver's left foot. Pull that. Up comes the trunk. Lift it up. And a nice amount of room in here for a couple of weekend bags. It's, you're going to hold a pretty good amount of stuff in here with this trunk. It's well done. We have our carpeted floor mats right here and our front license plate bracket if front license plate bracket if you need it. And then we have a spare underneath here. So thank you for that. This cargo net, which I hate, is here as well. And then these back seats will fold down to give you even more space. So all you need to do is come around the right side of the car first. Here's the knob. Pull it up. Set the seat down. Come around to the left side. Same thing. There's the knob. Pull it up. Set her down. And now we have even more space, even though there's a kick up there, more space for those larger items. So a pretty good use of space here in the back of this Versa by Nissan. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And one thing I did forget is the shopping hooks that I mentioned on the window sticker. Here they are. You go and shopping. There's the hook. You just put your shopping bags on the end of these hooks and it'll get them out of the way for you while you're going home. How about that little nugget? All right, here's the window sticker for this 2023 Versa SCVT. We'll zoom on in. 
give you all the action on this Versa. On the left here, we have our standard equipment. And then on the right, we have our optional equipment with that total charge. And then over here, you have the accessories added by the dealer, the wheel locks, the all-weather mats. So now you have that total price right there. I don't know if you can see it, 20580 Let's take our first spin. All right, we are on the road in this 2023 Nissan Versa S. And right off the bat, let me just we'll give you the rundown. Visibility is good out of the windshield, side glass, rear view mirror, rear glass, no issues with that. However, we do not have uh, the blind spot monitoring or cross traffic alert. We do have lane keep assist in this vehicle. So there's a mixed bag as far as the safety technology goes in this Versa for this $20,500 price tag which is awfully low for a new car price in the U.S. today, which makes it very appealing for the first-time car buyers, young people trying to get their first car. A lot of them like this one, especially with the S-plus package. But the question becomes, do we have the value in this Versa to compete against Kia Rio? Because the Rio we just saw was about the same price and it had the S technology package and it had more tech in it. So the Rio S sedan has this car on the tech. So let's see how everything else shakes out. Comfort wise, it is pretty comfortable for a small car. Now it's still gonna ride like a small car. You're gonna feel more bumps, you're gonna hear the wind and that sort of thing. Uh, but overall, it's very stable through the turns. The handling is good. The response out of this engine is pretty darn good. It feels pretty peppy for only 122 horsepower in this little Versa. So that is a good thing as far as trying to get out of a jam. If you need to get out of a jam, uh, you're going to have a fairly quick response out of this engine. The natural that naturally aspirated engine is going to give you that immediate power. You don't have to wait for the turbos to spool up, even in a small four-cylinder without a lot of horsepower. But of course, this car isn't that heavy either. It's a very, very small car. But I would have to say it is bigger than the Rio. Uh, and it feels bigger on the inside than the Rio does. So as far as space, and ride quality, I think this Versa has is, is got the Rio uh, on that area. So we have the Rio, better technology. We have the Versa with a larger cabin and better ride quality than the little Rio does. I don't feel as much like the littlest car on the road as I did with the Rio. The Rio is quite small. This one definitely a little bit bigger. But these little creaks and cracks in the road you see in front of me, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, there's some bumps or some cracks, and you can feel that coming through the wheel and coming through the chassis. So you are going to feel those bumps and those uh, vibrations in a small car like this small uh, Versa. Now, I'm not so sure, I, you know, this infotainment system, I've seen better ones. Uh, I think the Kia Rio with the Kia's 8-inch system has got this one in, uh, by far, because that one is an 8-inch, and it has wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. This one is a 7-inch, and you have to pay extra to get the wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So I think the Rio has got that one on the infotainment screen as well. But let's see how the stopping and the handling uh, feels in this little Versa. 
Oh no. Look at that. They uh, they oiled and chipped this road. That's too bad. But we're gonna get it up to speed a little bit. Here we go. Emergency stop three two one. Fine, no problem. Straight as an arrow. And now we'll take off again. Take it through the turns. Nice. You can probably hear all the stones from this road chipping. Going crazy on the side of the car. And now we come out of it. And we can go down the road. competent little car and if you need something that is going to uh, be economical not cost you very much uh, low running costs uh, and you don't have a big budget to spend on a car let's say you can't spend more than 22 23 thousand then I think this Versa is something that you should definitely put on your list to check out because it's gonna it's gonna click those boxes for you. Without a doubt. Now we get it back up to speed. Again, very easily to get this up to speed. Not, not difficult at all. So the car is very, very light on its feet. Feels more substantial than the Rio does on the road, as I said earlier. But it does feel smaller uh, to drive. It is a smaller car. The seats, obviously, with manual cloth seats, are not are not as comfortable. But they're good enough. But I don't think I'd want to sit on these on a 10-hour drive. As we come up into the turn now, back to the right, on the brakes. Nice handling around the curve. Then we come back the other way. Nice handling around the curve. I wouldn't want to take a nice car down this road with it all being chipped up. But overall, just a really nice compliant ride. And it's going to get, get you where you want to go. This is a point A, point B car that people need to get around town. Haul some people if they need to. Haul their gear if they need to. It's not going to send any fires on the traffic light Grand Prix. But it's a competent, small, inexpensive car for people that need this kind of action in their life for whatever reason. And I think this is one you should put on your list to check out. But let me know what you guys think. Are you going to go Nissan Versa? Are you going to go Kia Rio S? Nissan Versa S, I should say, versus Kia Rio S? Let me know how you would rock in this or you're gonna go somewhere else to another small small little car let me know what you think in the comments if you're in the market for one of these sub sub compact sedans but I want to thank Sioka Nissan here in Quakertown Pennsylvania for allowing the channel access to this 2023 Nissan Versa S CVT for review this morning I'd like to thank all of you for watching if you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a like Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.